Hi, everybody, and welcome to Sweet Dreams Wellness. I am Barbara Tuckett. I'm the owner of Sweet Dreams Travel and a wellness travel specialist. I believe that our mind, our body, and our spirit all play into our well being and they are all connected. I create travel experiences which improve our wellness so that you can return from your trip with more health, more happiness, and connection. This is being recorded as a YouTube video and also as a podcast. So if you are listening and you would like some visuals, then go check it out on YouTube um, because I do create a PowerPoint that goes along with each one with some great visuals and written a few written things. Um, if you are watching the video and you prefer to just listen while you're doing other things, then check out the podcast. My YouTube channel is called Barbara Tuckett and the podcast is Sweet Dreams Wellness Travel. So feel free to share and enjoy and rate um, so that I can be well known. This episode is number four and the title is U.S. Destinations That Feel Like Europe Part Two. I recorded part one last time so if you are interested in this when you are done, go back and check out part one because we talked about completely different destinations still in the US, but um, they feel like completely different European cities and locations. So um, go check out the first one if you like this one. Today's aspect of wellness that we'll be focusing on is pretty much all of them. As I go through the different destinations, we'll have a chance to talk about lots of different wellness um, aspects. So I will start sharing my screen. Hopefully this will work. I have shared before that my tech skills are not great, but I'm hoping that we are getting this to work just fine. I trust that we are. So we are going to be talking today about what to do in those places, where those places are and where to stay. Just recommendations that I have of um, how you can have an amazing time, even though you are still staying in the United States and possibly experiencing some things that you haven't before. So last week, I told about an experience that we had a few years ago when we took our kids to a resort, an all-inclusive vacation, um, south of Cancun in the Riviera Maya area. And we stayed at this amazing property. Every time that we walked into the lobby, we just felt this amazing sense of calm and peace and relaxation. It was air conditioned and it was just incredible. And we realized once we got home that part of that feeling that created that sense of well being and relaxation was at the scent that they had in the lobby. And we found we haven't been back since then, but, but we feel like, my daughters and I, feel like is a very good representation and replica of that smell. In fact, when we first very smelled it and found out about it, we um, were immediately transported back to that resort lobby. And so, of course, I bought some, and we use it to kind of mimic the feeling of that amazing vacation that we experienced together. So smells, sounds, atmospheres, all of these things can mimic other places and times. And that's kind of the theme for today's episode is that even if we are not flying over to Europe and experiencing a true European vacation, there are places that we can go right here in our own US, which is where I'm broadcasting from, um, that will kind of mimic the feel and give us an amazing vacation. So today, our countries that we are going to talk about are Spain, France, Netherlands, Greek islands, and Italy. So bear with me and off we go. We're going to start by visiting Spain or here in the US, the place is called St. Augustine, Florida. Now this will be no surprise to you if you know anything about St. Augustine. Um, because of its history and culture. Our wellness component that we are working or focusing on today, not today, wellness component, let me say that again, that we are focusing on 
here in St. Augustine is adventure. So let's begin. St. Augustine is America's oldest city, literally. It was founded by the Spanish way back in 1565. So it has way um, long history of being the Spanish settlement. There are 144 blocks. That is a ton. Listen again, 144 blocks of Spanish colonial style brick lined streets. There are buildings, there are homes, there are churches, um, great architecture. What I would recommend visiting are some places called the Leitner Museum, um, the Governor's House, which is a cultural center and museum, a place called the Colonial Quarter, which is so fun because it's got lots and lots of interactive activities that you can do that help you learn more about the history of St. Augustine and how life was back then. Um, there is even a medieval torture museum. Now you don't have to go there. Um, I'm not necessarily recommending it per se, but if that is something that sounds interesting to you, I just, that caught my eye because, you know, I don't know of many other places that have torture museums. Uh, of course, one of the very most famous places in St. Augustine is the Castillo de San Marcos, which is a Spanish fortress. It was built in 1672 to fend off the pirate raids. So there were, there's a long history of pirate raids and also of maybe the Floridians um, being pirates in um, the history of Florida. Anyway, that's for another day. A famous restaurant is called Casa Maya and has amazing seafood, seafood paella if you are interested in some authentic Spanish cuisine. And there are lots of restaurants all over that will help you with that. So as far as adventure goes, listen to all of these things that you could do in this area, almost anything that you would want. There are fishing charters. There's pale, sorry, I'm messing up on my words today. Parasailing, kayaking, mini golf. Oh, sorry, I lost my place. Bowling, a surf shop, and horseback riding. So tons of stuff. There are bike rentals, Segway rentals, scooter rentals. So a ton of stuff that you could do in the area. Um, there's this really cool 12 mile swamp conservation area. It's not all swamp. Um, they've got a two point, a, a, oh my goodness, I'm having a hard time speaking. 2.8 mile round trip trail there within that area. And you can go hiking, you can go biking, you can go horseback riding there. It's really a fun little area to explore. The closest airport to St. Augustine, Florida is Jacksonville, which is 50 miles away. Um, if you are flying into Orlando and want to see it, uh, it's a couple hours, almost two hours, a little under two hours to drive there. So there are some, there's some great access to it. It's not hard to get to. Now, if I were staying in St. Augustine, I would stay at the Casa de Sueños Bed and Breakfast. This is a great little place. It's located in the historic district, right in the middle of it all. There are only seven guest rooms, so you couldn't stay there with a huge group, but if you did have a multi-generation family or um, some friends that you were traveling with, you definitely could stay in some of these rooms. Some of the rooms have two-person jetted tubs, some of them have private balconies, and some are regular guest rooms. So you just have to um, see what is available when you are there. They have no spa on site, so that's a bummer, always in my book, that they don't have a spa. Um, however, I'll talk about spa in a minute. But they serve really great, hearty, wonderful breakfasts. They have evening socials that are included. They include free off-street parking, which parking is a premium in this area, as you might imagine. And so that's a great perk right there. And there are 11 blocks right within that area of pedestrian-only traffic. So you can park um, for free, staying at the little, this little bed and breakfast, and you can feel free to just stroll along the streets. And there are 11 blocks. This hotel has some great little packages, amazing packages. So you can just stay and adventure and do your own thing, or you could um, 
try out one of their packages. So just some examples of the packages that they have. They got a sailing package, a ghost walk, a point paranormal one, romance package, a chocolate lovers package, and they even have a dolphin and nature boat eco tour. So it's not swimming with the dolphins, but it's just going on the, the boat um, where you get to see dolphins and nature. They also have a massage package. Now this is what I was talking about. Although they do not have um, a spa right there on site, the spa package is good at a spa that is close by called the Salt Spa. They um, have a beach picnic package. So they've got these amazing, that I didn't even name them all, but they've got these amazing little packages that go along with the hotel stays at the resort here. So it's a great little place and a really fun place that you can just locally explore this great town of St. Augustine and feel like you're in Spain. Let's go to France. Now this also will be no surprise to anyone, I don't think, that the town city that exemplifies France is New Orleans, Louisiana. There is a runner up, however, because another great town that feels like Nice in France is a little town called Newport, Rhode Island. So um, I'm not gonna focus on Newport today, but I just wanted to let you know that there are some other options besides New Orleans, but New Orleans is a clear winner. It was founded by the French. There is a complete area called the French Quarter. The French Quarter has colonial townhouses. It's got a French market, French produce. They have lots of gourmet food, local arts and crafts there. Oh, I forgot to mention our wellness component for New Orleans. This also, drum roll please, is no surprise. It is food and culinary um, because of the amazing French food that you have in the area. So speaking of food, some restaurants of note are the Café du Monde, Galatoires, and Antoine's. Those are three that I would recommend, but there are lots and lots of other amazing places. So I would recommend visiting museums. There are historic homes, the St. Louis Cathedral, the Audubon Aquarium of the Americas, and Steamboat Natchez. So, so many great things to see and do in this area. Now back to our food component. This is what I would so recommend doing if you are in New Orleans. Go to a food demo or a food class or food tastings. There are several locations. You can do this at the New Orleans School of Cooking, the Mardi Gras School of Cooking, or the Crescent City Cooks Cooking School. So there are so many great um, opportunities to try or taste or see French cooking. So what a great thing. Of course, the closest airport is right there in New Orleans. So you are right there where you need to be. Now, if I were staying in New Orleans, I would stay at the Hotel Monteleon. This is a beautiful resort hotel. They are pet friendly. They have a 24 hour valet parking that they offer right there. They are right in the middle of the French Quarter. Um, they have a restaurant on site, which is called the Criolo Restaurant. And they have a famous, well-known um, bar and lounge. It's called the Carousel Bar and Lounge that is there at the, on the property. They have a rooftop fitness center and a heated pool up there that is on the roof. I love their spa aria. And let me tell you about just one of their signature package, packages. It's called the Deluxe Monteleon Experience. Get this, it's a 90 minute relaxing massage combined with the ultimate facial and the ultimate pedicure and aria manicure. Seriously, you may not want to hear how long that takes. It is a little over four hours for that entire experience, but oh my goodness, so amazing. And they have other signature experiences as well as a la carte that you can pick and choose at this spa. So that is definitely where I would stay at the Hotel Monteleon if I wanted to experience a little bit of France right here in the US. 
let's go to the Netherlands. My favorite location for the Netherlands is a town called New Holland in Michigan. Now, New Holland is close, its closest airport is Grand Rapids, Michigan, which is 30 miles away. Chicago is also not um, out of reach. It's 108 miles. So if you wanted a larger airport, you'd be less than two hours from Chicago or Grand Rapids, Michigan is the closest airport. The wellness component in New Holland is leisure, exploration, and relaxation. So let me give you a little more info. New Holland was settled by Dutch immigrants in the 1800s, no surprise there. It also has cobblestone streets and bridges, just amazing and quaint and beautiful. They have the oldest working Dutch windmill in the United States. So that's pretty cool, go for the windmill. Um, it's called the Windmill Island Gardens. And every year they have an annual tulip time festival which sees over a million visitors every single year. So this is incredible. If you want to go see the tulips, New Holland, Michigan is an incredible place to go. I would recommend visiting places like the Holland State Park and the Holland Liber, sorry, Holland Harbor Lighthouse. Um, there is a Big Red Lighthouse. He's called Big Red, or it's called Big Red, um, right there at the um, State Park. Now, Holland, New, sorry, New Holland does a ton of stuff year round. Lots and lots of activities and festivals and things like that. So I'm going to give you just a few as an example of what they do. In the fall, they have a fall fest and they bring in professional pumpkin carvers for that. Um, they also reenact the Battle of Five Forks and the Battle of Appomattox. They have a live mannequin night. In the winter, they have a winter market. In the summer, they have lots of summer farmers markets. They have lots and lots and lots of festivals and parades and fun activities year round. So pretty much any time you go is a great time to visit New Holland, Michigan, and just get a little slice of Denmark. Now, if I were staying here, oh my goodness, I would recommend the Hotel Sagatuck. S-A-U-G-A-T-U-C-K, if you um, didn't hear how I pronounced that. This place is so great. Again, um, last week I talked about um, a property that is adults only. This is too. So if you have your kids with you, you cannot stay at the Hotel Sagatuck. However, if you are going as a single or a couple or with friends and or other work, work, uh, I don't know, people, whoever you're going with, um, this would be a great little retreat. They do cater to couples, however, so I need to just give that as a warning or um, caveat. They have 18 rooms total. Include, of course, it's a bed and breakfast, and so they include breakfast. They also include fine desserts that are delivered to your room. They have a fireplace and a hydrotherapy tub in every single room. And they are built from and featured um, the only original lumber mill in the area. So you can stop by and see that lumber mill and see the lumber that is created there. When you're staying here at the Hotel Sagatuck, bikes are included with your stay. And I just wanted to give you a little idea of. So breakfast is included, and this is amazing, amazing food. So this is an idea of a sample summer picnic breakfast, all right? Smoked salmon, purple potatoes, asparagus, corn on the cob, poached eggs, and fresh spring greens. Doesn't that sound incredible? That makes me really hungry. I just really want to go try out some of their amazing farm-to-table food offerings that they have here at the Hotel Sagatuck here in New Holland, Michigan. So that is your little taste of the Netherlands. Let's go to Greece, specifically the Greek islands. Now, 
um, a little bit of a, an explanation here. If you were wanting to stay on mainland Greece and wanting a place that feels like mainland Greece, I would recommend a place called Tarpon Springs, Florida. This um, place has the largest concentration of Greek Americans in the whole entire country. And that would be my recommendation if you wanted mainland Greece. I'm gonna be focusing on the Greek islands. Um, so we're going to talk about a different destination today, but um, just wanted to give you that little bit of information. For the Greek islands, let's go to Catalina Island in California. Now Catalina Island is located in Southern California. The closest airport is Long Beach, which is 30 mile, 33 miles away. There are also many other airports in the area, really easy to get to. Our wellness component on Catalina Island is going to be adventure. Just wait till you hear all of the great things there are to do on Catalina Island. So Catalina Island, you've possibly heard of it um, already. It's just a short little ferry ride from a lot of places. You can take the ferry ride from Newport Beach, Dana Point, which is closer to San Diego from Long Beach or San Pedro. So there are different places where you can catch the ferry, really short little ferry ride. It is great because it has the same kind of Mediterranean climate that the Greek islands have. It has one town, which is called Avalon, and plenty of space to do all kinds of activities there on the island. It's a great combination of food, shops, hotels, and a chance for adventure. So some of those adventures could be, there are ocean tours, of course, since you're right in the middle of the ocean. There's an open air Hummer Island tour, which is really great. Zip lines, a ropes course aerial adventure, a climbing wall, a great falconry experience. So doesn't that sound awesome? A golf course, mini golf, there's um, also this great dive and recreation center. So if you wanted something that you would just do on your own, you could rent some equipment from here. And they rent things like kayaks, mountain bikes, stand up paddle boards, snorkel gear. So they have lots and lots of choices for what you could rent from them and just make your own adventures on the island. So Catalina Island is really great. If I were staying here, I would stay at a place called the Hotel Metropole. So the Hotel Metropole is right in the little town of Avalon, right on the Metropole Marketplace, which is a great little place that has cobblestone walkways, cooling fountains, boutique shops, lots of little eateries. Um, so the Metropole Marketplace, you definitely need to check that out. They have free Wi-Fi at the hotel and they have lots of different room types. They've got regular guest rooms, they have mini suites, a VIP wing, and they also have a two bedroom, two bath beach house, which you can reserve and rent out. So if you were going with a larger group or a family that you wanted a two bedroom, two bath, then that would be really fun to get. The VIP, I talked about how they have a VIP wing. So the VIP amenities at the hotel are all oceanfront suites with fireplaces, jacuzzi baths, and balconies. So they're amazing. Um, they have also not as many packages as the hotel that I talked about in New Orleans. However, they've got a, several different packages as well. Um, for example, they have a one night spa package. So if you were just staying one night, um, this package would include two one hour spa treatments. So you could choose between a massage or a scalp treatment or one of each and a night in, your, in a deluxe room and includes continental breakfast. So that's just one example of a little package that you could get if you weren't staying long, if you were only staying one night, you could do that. So that is a little feel of the Greek islands. Let's now head to Italy. Italy, the winner for getting that great Italian feel is Napa Valley, California, in Northern California. The closest airport here is called Sonoma County, which is only 30 minutes away. 
you wanted a larger airport, you could go to Oakland or Sacramento, which is about an hour and a half away from this area. Of course, San Francisco airport is also not too far away. It's a couple of hours, so a little bit further. So the wellness component here, of course, of course, has to be food. But there are so many other things to do that like you can have a lot of different wellness components here in Napa Valley. In fact, a second runner up, I'll just do a little spoiler alert. It would be spa. Let me just give you that. I'll get to that in a minute. So the runner up for Italy is also a great wine country area. It's in the Virginia wine country. So if you live closer to Virginia and would rather go there than the California Napa Valley area, uh, the Virginia wine country is also a really great little mini Italy type of experience. So let's get back to California. There are so many vineyards, there are winding roads and these lush hills that are so green, these little rural towns, wine tasting rooms, over 500 wineries, vineyards, olive oil, and Michelin starred restaurants, which is where the food part comes in. If you are interested in cooking demos or cooking tastings or tours, there, is, there are two great places where you could go. There is the Culinary Institute of America at Greystone, and there is also the Napa Valley Cooking School. So great places that you could go for those types of things. Now, if you are in Napa Valley, you've got to try Napa's most distinctive restaurant, which is called the Napa Valley Wine Train. And these are beautifully restored antique rail cars, and you actually can dine in them. And of course, wine tastings as well. So you got to try the train as well as, oh, so many other restaurants in the area. Other adventures that you can have in this area. You can do get bike rentals or tours that are led on bikes. You can rent motorcycles, hot air balloon rides. This area is famous for some hot air balloon rides. You can do paintball, horseback riding, visit Lake Hennessy, which is a large reservoir which is in the area. They have fishing and boating there and you can do all of those types of rentals and things there. They do not allow swimming at Lake Hennessy, however, because it's um, a more of a recreation lake. They have fly fishing in the area and of course, lots of hiking. So one must see if you are in the Napa Valley area is the Old Faithful Geyser of California. They have a goat farm there, they have a picnic area and gardens, so it'd be really fun just to kind of make a great experience out of it. Lots of golf. Um, in the Napa Valley area as well. And food, 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 and of course, wine, 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 if you are interested in those types of things. You can't miss some great restaurants there. Now, if I were staying in the Napa Valley area, it's a super, super hard decision because there are so many, like probably 15, really super amazing spa resorts here. Incredible. There are so many to choose from. So I had to narrow it down and I decided that I would stay at the Meadowwood Napa Valley. Okay, this place is incredible. There are two professional croquet lawns. So you can play croquet, isn't that awesome? There's a nine hole walking golf course and seven tennis courts that are on the property. They have three pools. One is um, just the, they call it the hotel pool, which is an adult pool for 21 and over. They have a club pool, which is more for just relaxing or for swimming laps. And they have a family pool. So they've got some great choices of pools. They have right there on site, they have over four miles of hiking trails. They've got a fitness center, Lots of great fitness classes like yoga, aqua fitness, cardio, weights, eco fitness, like lots of great offerings there. And I have to tell you, this Meadowwood Napa Valley is Forbes Magazine's only five star spa experience in Napa Valley. So, to be honest, combined with all the activities and amazing experiences that there are to do at the resort, 
this is one of the reasons that I chose it is because it's seriously a five star spa experience. So all of the spa treatments here at the spa, they have a, a theme and they are vine, earth, air, or field. And they also have this incredible, it's called part of their culinary offerings there at the property. They have what's called a spa culinary menu and it changes seasonally and it mirrors those four elements that they have at the spa. So for example, let me give you an idea um, of a menu item. This goes with the air theme and it is lemon thyme with Mary's organic chicken, bok choy and wild rice. Doesn't that sound great? I'm getting so hungry just even thinking about this great food that's here. So imagine this amazing experience of feeling like you are in Italy, being in the Napa Valley area in California and getting to experience this incredible spa experience, all of the activities at the resort, as well as everything that there is to do in the area. What a great, relaxing, amazing vacation. So take a deep breath. We have now been through a lot of places in Europe. This is not everywhere. I seriously could have devoted um, a single podcast episode to each of these locations. Like I just barely scratched the surface of all of these places. And it was, you know, really difficult to narrow down the things I wanted to talk about and the little tidbits of information I wanted to pass on because there is such a wealth of information on all of these places. And there are so many other places um, in Europe, European feeling places that you could go to, not in Europe, but actually in the US. So I didn't even get to all of them, but I hope that you have loved having this little taste of Europe, feeling like you could go somewhere right here in the US and not even have to leave um, right here in North America and go to a little taste of Europe. And I also hope that you could feel um, how great it is to have the ability to be transported somewhere without ever even leaving your home town. And maybe today, as you've been watching or listening, you've been transported to some of those European destinations without even leaving your own home. Because that was my goal, was to help us feel like we are not stuck, that we have options and choices and there are beautiful places to go and explore. So to follow up, just one last little follow up on my story about the candle. I bought the candle at that store the one that smelled like our resort in Mexico. And that was over three years ago. And every time I run out of that scent, I go back and get it again. Because I love the fact that when I burn that candle, that I have just a little taste, just a little bit of that feeling of heavenly calm that I experienced in the lobby of that beautiful resort. And so I hope that you can feel just a little bit of excitement, maybe, or anticipation, um, ability to go to a place right here in the United States and be able to feel that sense of whatever it is that you are looking for, whether it's adventure or food or connection or exploring or spa and relaxation, whatever it is that you need for your own wellness experience. I hope that some of these have given you um, some ideas. And I would love to talk to you about travel. I would love to talk to you about where you would like to go or ideas that you have and how you would like to travel for your own wellness and what you can do. I would also invite you to connect with me. Um, follow me on Facebook or Instagram or connect on Twitter. My Facebook and Instagram our pages are Sweet Dreams Travel, S-U-I-T-E, Dreams with an S, Travel. Twitter is Sweet Dreams Trav. 
And then if you are interested or would like to help my podcast ratings, I would invite you to go to a website called ratethispodcast.com slash sweet dreams and um, give me a rating and let me know how, how you think I'm doing. So um, I hope you've enjoyed this little slice of Europe today and I have really enjoyed sharing it with you. Would love to um, talk about travel and if you're not you're not ready to talk about travel, then keep listening and hopefully you'll get some enjoyment out of our experiences as we share them. So happy traveling, happy wellness, and I will 